Hey, what's up? I'm Norris and welcome back to another Soil Along. Today we'll be doing the order of construction for my new Nomi pattern, which is 2024, the denim jean pant. And today we'll be doing view A, which is a flare at the bottom. Now let's get started. Now, because this is not a learn to sew video, if you need further instructions, I will advise you to go to sewedacademy.com where you get the first five courses for free if you sign up for the free trial. Do that, come back and follow along with me. Okay, so once again, we'll be using my latest Nomi pattern, which is 2024. And we'll be doing view A, which is the slight flare, and view B is basically the straight leg. So if you turn to the back, so if you look at notions, you can see that you need a seven inch zipper. I usually go a little bit longer, like a 12, just to have it out the way when you put it in, it just makes it easier. And then you will need one three quarter inch um, button. You can do a five eighths of an inch, a little smaller, um, but it's not that big of a difference. And then you will need 19 three eighths of an inch rivets. Um, now the rivets are optional, but it gives a little bit more detail in durability to your finished garment so now let's go through all the pattern pieces you need pattern piece number nine this is your back you want to cut two out of fabric and be sure to do all your markings on the left side of your back only there's a pocket right there so you make sure to put this here and then also you'll have a little tail coming out your side seam on that same left side um, so normally you wouldn't have all these markings so don't skip these Next, we have pattern number six. This is your pocket lining. You wanna cut two out of your lining fabric. Pattern piece number one, this is your front. You wanna cut two out of your fabric. Pattern piece number two, this is your front patch. You wanna cut two out of fabric. Pattern piece number 10, um, this is your inner leg. You wanna cut two out of fabric. Pattern piece number three, this is your inner leg. You wanna cut two out of fabric. Pattern piece number five, this is your yoke front. You wanna cut two out of your fabric. Pattern piece number 14, this is your carriers, your belt loops. Now you wanna cut one out of fabric because you'll be cutting multiple ones. Pattern piece number 12, this is your back pocket. You wanna cut two out of fabric. Pattern piece number 16, this is your right waistband. You want to cut two out of fabric, and it says two out of interfacing, but I don't usually interface my denim, so it depends on how heavy your denim is, and if your denim have a little stretch, you might want to interface it too so it won't pull. Pattern piece number 15, now this is going to be the insert for your outside seam, so you want to cut two of these out of your fabric. Pattern piece number 17, this is your left waistband. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric and then two out of interfacing. Like I said, I usually don't interface my denim uh, waistband, but if it does, has a little stretch, and if it's not as thick, you can not interface it. Pattern piece number four, this is your inside pocket. You wanna cut one out of your fabric. Also pattern piece number 18, this is your left pocket. You wanna cut one out of interfacing. You need pattern piece 11, this is your loop. You wanna cut one out of fabric. Pattern piece number 13, this is your yoke back. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. And then last but not least, you have pattern piece number seven, which is your fly facing. You wanna cut one out of fabric and one out of interfacing. And then you have your fly. You wanna cut one of these out of your fabric. Now once you cut all of your pattern pieces out of your fabric and lining and interfacing, we can begin sewing. Okay, so first things first, what I'm going to do is you wanna grab your um, front patch. It looks like this, it looks kinda of like, almost like the shape of your front piece, but it's very short. And what I went ahead and did, I did a stay stitch, which is right here on this curve. Not so it won't move, but to give me a guide where to fold the seam allowance. And we're gonna use that same guide across the front, the opposite side of this curve here, and then also the bottom. Now, I've only stitched here to give myself a guide. I can pretty much eyeball where what five eighths of an inch is around here. But before I turn under the five eighths of an inch, I'm going to do some clips until I get to that stitching. Now this right here, 
allows the fabric to turn under just like that and I'm gonna press that and like I said before I'm gonna turn under five eighths of an inch across the top down this side here and then across the bottom you're not gonna do the inside here so just basically go ahead and press that come back and we'll continue okay so as you can see I'm back from the pressing table I have everything I have all my seam allowances pressed where it needs to be and then now we're going to take it and we're going to grab your front piece and you should have your markings on where you should place it and line it up and that unfolded edge should be on the raw edge inner leg here and then now we're going to pin so we'll go ahead and pin here okay so now we're going to head to the machine we're going to egg stitch across the bottom up the side across the top and then around this curve here and then also you want to do a second stitch a quarter inch away from the first one or you can do three eighths of an inch away depending on how far you want your top stitching but you just want to do another row of top stitching a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch away from the first one using the same guide and then after you do that only thing you want to do here is just base this inner leg okay so do that come back and we'll continue and you want to pin and sew your other patch onto your other front the same exact way. Okay, so we're back from the machine and I have the patch um, top stitched onto the front. And then now you want to grab your inner leg and we're going to turn it right sides facing and pin it to the front. Now there should be two notches matching up with the two notches here. You want to pin there first. Okay, so now we're just going to head to the machine and you want to start at the top and stitch all the way down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that our inner leg is attached to our front, it should look like this, it's coming together pretty nicely. So now what I'm gonna do at the moment, I'm gonna put this to the side real quick and I'm going to grab our patch pockets. Now the one in the middle is the patch pocket for the back and this right here is the left back side pocket this right here is your inside coin pocket and this right here is your yoke okay so what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and prep the pocket pieces so we can continue so with the back real quick what you want to do is you want to do two folds you want to do a three eighths of an inch fold and then you want to do one more three eighths of an inch fold and give it a good press. Once you give it a good press, you're going to add stitch it on the fold and then you're going to go a quarter inch away from the fold catching the fold underneath. So basically two rows of top stitching. And then once you do that, you'll press your seam allowance, which is five eighths of an inch across both sides and then across the bottom. Okay, so you want to prep that. I kind of do mine a little different. I press the seam allowances first, and then I do my two rows of three eighths of an inch folds. So you have two options. On your back side pocket, um, you can do one row of gathering right here where that curve is and pull, and that'll help you fold up and get that five eighths of an inch curve pressed underneath. Okay. So you basically do it just like that. And once you have it pressed, and then after you do that, you can do your two three-eighths of an inch folds just like that. And then you want to top stitch it the same exact way. And then with this one, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're not going to fold the bottom. We're going to press your five-eighths of an inch on both sides just like this. And then at the top, you can do your two rows of top stitching, okay? So let's go ahead and prep these pockets and we can continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, my back patch pocket is finished. Very nice. So in the instructions, it's going to tell you to fold all the way around like this. And then top stitch this with the fold on the seam. 
but you also have the option to keep it open and have that caught within the seam. I prefer to have it caught within the seam. That's why I told you not to fold it. But if you want to follow the instructions, you can fold it in top stitch it all the way around. Okay. Now, this qualm pocket, as we press both sides and then we turn under three eighths of an inch um, for a double fold, we're going to take that and we're going to place it on the right yoke. Now, if I'm wearing this, it'd be on my right side. But since we see it right here, it looks like it's on the left side. So there should be two markings there. You want to place that exactly where those markings are. So now you just want to add stitch both sides and then you want to do another top stitch row a quarter inch away from the first one. Okay, so let's just set the patch pocket to the side for our back piece when we get there and also our patch back pocket. So let's go ahead, do this, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so back from the machine, moving right along. Um, as you can see right here, I went ahead and finished up that raw edge with a serge. Um, you can do a zigzag stitch, but you just want to secure that. There's no need to fold it or anything. And then once you do that, we're just going to take it and place it right in the corner like this because the pocket will be like this and you'll be able to see that yoke on the back side, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're going to go ahead and stitch along the curve and then we're just going to baste the top and the side, okay? So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so now we're back from the machine and we have our yoke stitched down. Um, just to let you know, we only have this pocket on the right side, so your left side will not have this patch pocket because you only have one. Um, so once you prep your yoke and have it stitched down onto your pocket bag, we're going to turn it right sides facing. So basically flipping it over upside down like this, match it all up and we're going to pin, okay, along just the curve here. So now we're going to head to the machine and we're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance starting on one end and then stopping up here, back stitching at the beginning and also at the end. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine and before we continue, I want to let you know that I did some under stitching. Um, basically, that's where you take your seam allowance and push it towards your lining and then you just want to stitch very close to the seam on the lining side and that will help roll your lining to the inside okay so once you do your under stitching we can go ahead and trim some of this down so now we're going to form the pocket just a bit so we can press on the back side it'll look more like this so now we're gonna to head to the machine and press this down. And once we press it down, we're going to do two rows of top stitching. We're gonna edge stitch very close to that fold. And then we're gonna do a second row of stitching a quarter inch away from there, okay? So do that, come back and we'll continue. But before we head to the pressing table and also um, stitching, the top stitching, I'm gonna make some clips on this seam allowance just so we can get a better turn. Be careful not to cut through your stitching. And we're just gonna cut out just a few clips just so we can get a nice turn underneath. Okay. So that makes it a little easier for that turn, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just press this down. Okay, so I'm back from the pressing table. You can see I did my two rows of top stitching here. It looks really nice. And then you have that lining that's not folding to the front so you don't see it. So what we're gonna do next is, so basically take that, turn it to the front, and that's how the pants are gonna end up. So for the lining, I'm gonna give you a couple of options. You could pin here and then stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then you can just baste the side 
and then you can base the top so it won't move or you can make it a little bit more fancier with a French seam so basically instead of the right size touching you want the wrong size to touch it's gonna look a little awkward at first go ahead and match up your double notch so it can be in place so your pocket gonna look weird at first so we're gonna head to the machine and we're going to stitch this down using five eight seven inch seam allowance so do that come back and we'll continue okay now that we're back from the machine you can see I did my stitch now I'm going to go ahead and trim this down to a quarter inch and then now we're gonna turn it right back and give it a good press make sure you poke out that corner so once you lay this flat down you want to give it a good press and then you just want to stitch 3 eighths of an inch from the edge so go ahead and do that come back and we'll continue okay so we're back from the machine as you can see I went ahead and stitch 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge here and now we have a nice finished pocket turn to the front I have my right side and I have my left side here as you can see both are finished so next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our zipper in but first let's go ahead and prep a few things now this is the fly facing you want to go ahead and finish that raw edge either with a sturge or zigzag stitch so it won't fray and then this right here is the fly so you want to go ahead and turn right sides facing and then you want to stitch that bottom curved edge here, five eighths of an inch. Trim, turn it around, come back, and we will continue. All right, so we're back from the machine. Um, as you can see right here with the fly, I went ahead and surged that raw edge, or you can base it depending on what you want to do. It's optional. So next, what I'm going to do is put this aside for just a moment. And with our fronts, we're going to turn it right sides facing. So right sides facing we're going to pin at the notch and then also we're going to pin at that dot all right so there are two dots there's a dot five eighths up of an inch away from the edge and then there's one that's supposed to only be on the right side which is three eighths of an inch away don't confuse it with that one you want to use the one that's five eighths of an inch away and we're only stitching from the dot to that notch right there okay so it's about a good maybe like an inch and a quarter so you want to stitch that come back and we'll continue okay like i said we're going to back stitch at the beginning and then also at the end starting at that dot and we're going to finish up at the notch Okay, now that we are back from the machine, as you can see, we have the two fronts connected right here in the center. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my fly facing and right sides facing. I'm going to align that up and pin. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch down here at the dot, back stitch, and then go all the way up. And you want to do that using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, like I said, we're going to back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. So go ahead and put your needle in place. And also while we're here, you want to flip that facing over and we're gonna do some under stitching. So basically we're gonna stitch on the right side here of that seam with your seam allowance facing your facing as well. Okay, so just head to your table and trim some of the seam allowance off. Okay, so I went ahead and trimmed some of the seam allowance and then I pressed it to the other side 
And then on the right side here, I went ahead and pressed 3 eighths of an inch. Now you'll see a dot on the wrong side. So that's where that 3 eighths of an inch is. And you just press that down. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to grab our zipper and I'm going to align it up. The zipper facing the front side and then I'm going to lay that 3 eighths of an inch fold on the right side which is on the left right here. I'm going to put it about an eighth of an inch from that zipper teeth. Okay so you want it kind of close, but not too close. So go ahead and base this down. So once you base it down, I'm not going to base mine. I'm just going to pin all of mine together. But once you base it down, if you chose to base it down, you can go ahead and grab your fly and match up this edge here to the edge of the zipper tape on the back. Pin this real quick. Okay. So on the back, you just want to make sure that that's aligned just like that. And then once it is, I'm just gonna go ahead and repin that in place. And then we'll continue all the way down. Okay, so now we're just gonna head to the machine. We're gonna add stitch all the way down, back stitching at the beginning and also at the end. Okay, back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. And also I went ahead and switched my um, presser foot to my zipper foot. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, we have our fly attached. So next, what we're gonna do is I want you to go ahead and make sure that the left side goes over that zipper just like that. So the zipper should be about a quarter inch away from um, the edge of the left. So once that matched up like that, we're going to kind of hold that in place. Make sure you don't get no buckle right here in the center. You want to make sure that's flat and smooth. So making sure that's like that, you want to flip that over. So let me grab it. Then I'm going to turn it over. So we're pinning that zipper tape to that fly facing. Okay. Now to check where you're pinning, you can always open it up just to make sure you're in place. So basically it's like this. We're gonna we're gonna keep this side right here pinned back, pin that facing back like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this to the right side. And now you want to look at the front. Now, if it's too far on this side here, you got to repin. If it's too far on the on the on the other side, you want to repin. But mine pretty much matches up perfectly, just like that, all the way up. So now we're gonna head to the machine. We're gonna flop this back, and then turn it this way so we can sew it. And we're going to stitch starting from the bottom, going all the way up. Okay. And the reason why I have an extra long zipper is because you get to stitch without having to move your zipper pull out the way. Okay, so back stitch at the beginning, also at the end. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I'm going to keep the pins on the fly pin, and then now I'm gonna turn to the front. And as you can see, the zipper is in a good placement, so you don't want to have to redo that. So keeping it just like this, and like I said, we're keeping the fly um, out the way, so it's still pinned. 
And then now what we're gonna do only on the left side. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna follow our stitching line all the way through, ending up here. And then we're gonna do a second row, a quarter inch from there, all the way up. Now to give you a better, a better accurate line, you can use a chalk marker or a something to guide you. So you can just follow underneath. You can feel that seam underneath. Just follow it all the way up. Okay, as you can see, I made my stitching and it should catch the fly facing underneath. Okay, so let's head to the machine. We're gonna do our two rows and we'll be done inserting our zipper. Okay, so you see my guideline. And as you can see, once again, I'm gonna repeat. You wanna keep your fly out the way, which is right here. And then now we're just gonna go ahead and do our two rows, back seat at the beginning and also at the end. Okay, so now you want to do your second row. Okay, so I'm back from the machine, and as you can see, I have my two rows of top stitching here, if you can see that. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna unpin that fly and this is how it's supposed to look on the other side. So when you open up your zipper, you have that fly right underneath and then your facing is stitched down on this side. So one last thing that you can do, you want to, you can come to the corner here and you can tack down the end of your fly and your fly facing just so it won't move. You can do it by hand or you can just go to the machine and just do a couple of stitches. And then also on the front, on that first stitching row right here, you can do about a quarter inch length of zigzag stitches from the center seam and coming out to about a quarter inch, just a zigzag stitch, just to secure that fly right there, okay? So once you do that, we can go ahead and move to the back. So when it comes to our back piece, we're gonna start with the left back because it has a little bit more detail. So first of all, the back patch pocket that we already prepped. So if you decided to fold in this side here on your back patch pocket that goes down here to the bottom, um, there's no need to insert it right now. We'll do it after we do the side seam But if you want it to be caught into the seam now would be the time that you place it So there's a placement down here. You want to go ahead and line it up and I will pin it Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there now before we put our patch pocket onto the left side We need to go ahead and prep our tab so the right sides facing You want to pin now we're gonna stitch this down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of this down. Then I'm gonna turn the right side out. So I'm just gonna take a safety pin. Okay, so now what you wanna do is give this a really good press. And just so you know, you want to look at your, check your markers. And it's going to look like this. And then this part right here is going to be underneath. But what you need to do is first go ahead and give it a really good press. And then we're going to top stitch it. Your bobbing thread is underneath and not showing. So go ahead and press it just like this. And then you want to edge stitch both sides and then you want to stitch a quarter inch away from the edge on both sides. So you'll basically have four stitches, two on this side and two on that side. Once you do that, we'll be able to put this onto our back piece. So as you can see, it's slanted right here. You wanna go ahead and put that 
right in between your two dots and then you're going to pin and then also to be helpful on the other side here you just want to mark off what that three what that five eighths of an inch is so you'll know where to place it and you want to place it between your two dots and then once you do that you can take once you have your patch pocket all did that was showed earlier you want to make sure that aligns right up there just like that so I'm going ahead and pin that in place okay so this is pretty simple and I guess while we edit we can go ahead and put our back yoke on too so this is the back yoke you know the bigger portion is on the on the center back and then the smaller portion is on the outside seam and there should be a double notch here to match up so we're right sides facing you want to go ahead and align that so now let's head to the machine so you want to start here especially if you have this side right here going into your seam getting caught into your seam so I'm going to start here and edge stitch around till I get here and then I'm going to do a second row a quarter inch away from there and then what we're going to do right here we're just going to tack this side right here down and then I'm going to fold this up and then we're going to do the same thing with two rows of top stitching one edge stitched around and a quarter inch away from that first one and then five eighths of an inch starting here down to the other end okay so do all of that come back and we'll continue okay as you can see i went ahead and stitched down my back patch pocket i got my tab in i had my other back patch pocket right here and then also what i did with my seam on my yoke i went ahead and finished it with a surge pressed my seams up and then i did my two rows of top stitching one close to the edge and then one a quarter inch away from there. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your inner leg for your back piece and we're going to match up our notches first. You should have a double notch down here. And we're gonna pin. Okay, now we're just gonna head to the machine and starting at the top, we're gonna back stitch and go all the way down using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and once you do that come back and we'll continue okay so we went ahead and added our inner leg I went ahead and surged that seam and then I pressed that seam towards um, that piece so once you do one back you want to finish your other back the same exact way only difference is you don't have a tab on the right side nor do you have a back patch pocket lower back patch pocket um, but you do have the patch pocket here and then you also have a yoke so what we're going to do now, we're going to grab our front piece and we're right sides facing. We're going to pin our inseam together. So you want to pin at your notch first. And if that back is a little shorter, you just want to pull. So you want to head to the machine, you want to back stitch at the beginning and go all the way down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you do this, you want to pin and sew your other inseam the same exact way. And then we also, I'm gonna clean up my stitch with a serge, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, we have both of our inseams connected um, with the front and back. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn everything right sides facing. And we're going to focus on what a crotch stitch we stopped at where that notch is and we're going to pin all the way into through that back seam okay so let's pin this up real quick make sure all your seams match up okay so once again let's head to the machine we're going to continue that stitch at that notch that we stopped at we're gonna back stitch at the beginning, stitch all the way until we get to the end. You wanna do that, come back and we'll continue. And the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch. And real quick, before we head to the machine to do this stitch on that right side, the side where you see the, the fly, you want to take just 
that right seam, not both of them, just the right seam here. And we're just going to clip into it. Now you can clip into it, I say maybe like a half inch away, right above, above that um, notch right here, just so you can move all the fabric to one side. Okay, and that seam is gonna stay open just up here. And then also while I'm here, I can go ahead and trim off the rest of that. Now we're gonna head to the machine. We're going to back stitch right where that stitching stopped. And we're gonna stitch all the way up using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. All right, so I back from the machine and I went ahead and stitched um, all the way across the center back and then the crotch underneath. And then also what I did was I pressed my seam allowance. But before I pressed my seam allowance, I went ahead and finished it with a serge, as you can see right here, and to make it real clean up underneath. You can do flat fail seams for all the seams, but for filming purposes, um, I just serged it off because uh, it's a little bit quicker. But after I did that, I pressed it towards the left side, and then I top stitched uh, my two rows close to the seam and then a quarter inch away from that one. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and start forming your pants. So now this will be the perfect time to baste the side seam instead of doing a regular stitch just to see if you need to make any adjustments. So before we start inserting this insert here onto our outside seam, uh, we need to go ahead and Turn these pans right side facing. Just like this. And this is also the perfect way to try them on. You don't have to do a regular stitch. You can baste it first before um, stitching it down. It should be a dot where you should stop stitching. And so I put my marker right here. So let me go ahead and pin there so I know where to stop stitching. And then we're going to continue pinning all the way up. These pants won't fit perfect at the waist just yet because we don't have the waistband. But you can get an idea if you have to take in a little bit more or a little bit less when you try them on. So first, I'm going to go ahead and um, do a basing stitch from the top all the way down until I get to my marker. Now, this spot right here is where we're stopping at is where we're going to be inserting this insert right here as you can see so that's why we're stopping right there so once again it is optional to do a basing stitch if you want to try them on to see that would be the smarter thing to do just to base it real quick on both sides put them put them on and if it fit um, you can go ahead and do a regular stitch if not make the adjustments and then do a regular stitch so you won't waste time and taking your stitches out if you especially if you have to um, make more room for yourself so go ahead and baste it starting at the top all the way down until you get to your dot and if it works out you can go ahead and do a regular stitch so go ahead do that come back for both sides okay so we're back from the machine as you can see i went ahead and stitched just until i got to my marking down here and also i pressed my seam open and then i surge up until um, that point because after we attach that insert i'm gonna be surging on both sides of it individually so that's why i opened up the seam and pressed it all right, so one thing to note, because some people might have issues with jeans in the past fitting on their, on their waist. Instead of taking a lot here on your side seam, you can take in right here at that center back. But you'll have to undo your top stitching enough so you can um, curve into your waist in the back. And that's how you'll get it from having that little space in the back, especially if you have a, a dip um, in your lower back. And then you just want to press it again and then top stitch it. I've done it already and it looks like I haven't done anything. So you want to do that before you get into the waistband and all that stuff. OK, so next, let's go ahead and insert these pieces. So you just want to line up your marking to right size facing. You want to take your dot, your marking, and put exactly where that seam is. And then just test it out to see if that's good. I added a little width on mine, so mine might be slightly off. 
And then you want to pin, match up your notches. You have to pin this other side as well. All right, so we're gonna to head to the machine and we're gonna stitch on one side, starting at your marking, going all the way down five eighths of an inch. Then we're gonna back stitch, cut your threads. And then we're gonna start over back and stitching at the beginning as well, all the way down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? So you wanna do both of these. And then once you do that, you wanna do your other insert to other leg the same exact way. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, I went ahead and finished my seams on that insert right here, and I attached them both. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn this right side out. We're getting very close, as you can see here. So now let's go ahead and work on our belt loops and our waistband. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and press in three-eighths of an inch on both sides and then that's gonna meet in the middle, and then we're gonna take that and turn it onto itself, okay? So once again, we're gonna take both of the long ends and press them down three-eighths of an inch, and then we're gonna fold them together, just like that. And we're gonna basically do that all the way down, and then we're gonna add stitch to close out that opening, and then we're going to add stitch on that fold, on that single fold too, so we can get that double top stitching, okay? So you want to do that all the way down. So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, we have our two rows of top stitching on both sides. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to measure out four inches. And then we're going to cut. Okay, so after I have my first one, I'm just going to use that as a guide to continue cutting, and we should end up with seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Uh, one was just a little bit too big. Might have stretched. Okay, so now we have seven even ones. So now let's go ahead and place them onto our jeans. So if you can tell which side has the top stitching, um, you want that top stitching um, to be face down and the bobbing side to be faced up. So you want to go ahead and just place them where we have our markers. And because it's kind of thick, I'm gonna go ahead and use my clamps to clamp them down. Got that side seam. And then there should be a notch right in the middle of your yoke where those last two should go. So now that we have all seven onto our pants, let's go ahead and tack them down. Um, I wouldn't go all the way down to the seam allowance. I would probably do it like a half inch, just so you won't see that stitching sticking out when we put on our waistband, okay? So go ahead and tack down all of your belt loops. Come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. All of my belt loops are tacked down. And then now what you want to do is you want to grab your waistbands and we'll put this to the side for just a moment. So this is my right waistband and then you have notches to match up. And then when right side's facing, you want to go ahead and match up your notches. And then I'm going to pin. And whatever adjustments you made to your waist of your jeans, you want to kind of make those same adjustments to your waistband. But for me, I'm just going to take a little bit more than the seam allowance, which is five eighths of an inch. I'm going to take um, three fourths of an inch. And then whatever extra I have, I'm just going to let it go past my center front because the shape is pretty much consistent all the way around. So what you want to do is go ahead and do your seam allowance on five eighths of an inch. If you want to do a little bit more because you did take in, you can do that in the center back. So do that. Come back and we'll continue. And then also, I just wanted to let you know that I did go ahead and interface my um, other waistband, the part that's going to fold on the inside, the facing. So I went ahead and stitched my three-fourths of an inch, and then I turned up the seam allowance. So go ahead and do your waistband. Go ahead and stitch this down. Come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I have my pants with the um, back side facing up. And then now I'm going to take 
my waistband. And remember, this is your left, this is your right. And we're gonna go ahead and match that center seam with the center back seam. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use my clamps. So I'm gonna clamp this down. Okay, so just showing you one side right here. Um, all your markings might not match up with your pants, especially if you took in some on the side like I did. So what I did was instead of cutting anything off before I attached it, I just let the rest of it hang off. Once I stitch this down, I'll trim it down and leave just five eighths of an inch on the edge, as you can see right here. So this is basically how much I've already taken in on one side. So the rest of it just hangs off. So if you made adjustments to have your um, denim jeans fit your waist pretty snug, because denim do stretch a bit, whatever additional you have that hangs over, you just wanna leave that until we stitch it down. Let's go do the other side. And then on my other side, it's the same exact thing. It should only be extending five eighths of an inch from the center front here, but because I took in the side and I didn't make a bunch of adjustments to my waistband, I'm just gonna do it once I stitch this down, okay? So let's head to the machine. We're going to stitch, starting at the center front, going all the way to your other center front using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. As you can see, I went ahead and attached my waistband and I press my seam up. And once again, like I said, if you took in any in your waist, you'll probably have a waistband that's a little big. So what you wanna do is from that center front, you just wanna make a little marking. And then that's what we're going to trim off. Okay. And then the same thing for the other center front. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. Okay. All right, so now once you have that done, you want to take your interface part, if you did interface. Once you do that, you want to line up that center back. And then we're just going to go around. Okay. So now that I have it together. I'm going to go ahead and trim off this because it's already lined up. And then I'm going to do the other side the same way. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and trim off the rest of that zipper tape that's too long. And then now I'm going to head to the machine. I'm going to stitch using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning, going up, pivoting, and continuing five eighths of an inch all the way around until we get to the other side. And we're going to pivot at the center front, and then we're going to end up here. Okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine, as you can see. And now I'm going to go ahead and do some trimming. I'm going to trim the corners. Okay, now that we trimmed that off. Okay, so now we're just gonna turn this to the inside and give this a really good press. Okay, so go ahead and give it a good press, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I went ahead and pressed my waistband face into the inside, making sure that that seam allowance is tucked under and I pin it all the way around. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to add stitch. I'm gonna start add stitching very close to that seam. So I'm gonna follow that seam. I'm gonna do it about just, just under eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna do it all the way around. And then when we get to the other side, we're gonna pivot across the center front and then pivot across the top of the waistband all the way around. And then we're going to pivot one last time across the center front and stop where we started, okay? So do all of that come back and we'll continue. And also while you're at the machine, you can tuck under five eighths of an inch on your belt loop. 
And then we're gonna secure it with stitching it across the top a couple of times. And then we're gonna trim the bottom down. And then you wanna finish off your other belt loops the same exact way. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. And as you can see, went ahead and top stitch nicely around my waistband. And then I also attached my belt loops. The last thing you have to do up here is to do your buttonhole on your left side and then put in your denim button. And depending on whatever brand you purchase, you want to follow the instructions that came with it. And then also follow your instructions that came with the rivets that you chose. So if you grab your instructions, it'll show you all the key points where you should be adding your rivets, um, both sides of your pockets here, um, both sides of your pockets here, and then also here on your quam pocket and then here here, here, and here. After you do all of that, the last thing you have to do is to do your hem. Now, because this is a denim jean, you can do a double fold, three eighths of an inch, double fold, and then top stitch all the way around. Or you could do a wider hem because of the flare. It'll give it a good balance. Okay, so once you do all of that, you're all done. All right, congratulations, you're all done. Now be sure to tag and also follow me at Norris Dancer Ford on all socials. See you in the next one.